can't bring you with me this time. What do you mean? Welcome to Decoding TV's coverage of the Penguin Season 1 finale. Season 1, Episode 8, A Great or Little Thing. Patrick Klepek, let's just share our overall reaction to the finale. What do you think of the show? And then we'll dive into some of the stuff that happened. Broadly, I really liked it. I have some major qualms with some of the storytelling choices that were funny enough best encapsulated by a TikTok that you sent me <laughs> privately. <laughs> um <laughs> That are, I think are reflective of issues I have with the show yeah. in general that really get exaggerated um, in the finale. And yet, the performances across the series have been electric. The two core leads were just incredible. Um, I love the fact in the finale, we get these people in a room. We identify the thing the show has done best, which is get these two people bouncing off one another. Um, and I... I kind of love where they, they leave everything off. I'm glad characters survive that survive. I'm glad that there are, there are meaningful character deaths, but they don't feel cheap. They feel earned for yeah. the characters. And yeah, I know Matt Reese said at the start, like by the end of the show, you're going to be like fucking ready for the second movie. Mm -hmm. And he is 100% right that I am ready for that second movie. And I think it's pulled off something pretty masterful which is it i think you'll be able to watch the second movie without having watched this show but i'm so glad that i watched this show yeah yeah and oh, i can't i'm saying that without having seen the film but where it leaves the penguin as a character which is a little more black and white he's just an evil son of a bitch that's going to do whatever he wants to climb to the top i got to see that path here and i'm glad i did i'm glad this show exists Absolutely 100% agreed. What's so cool about it, Patrick, is they can literally explain all the events that happen in the show in Batman's sequel, uh, like the movie, via like one to two sentences. <laughs> like yeah. you can explain what happened with Penguin and like why he's in the situation he's in in one to two sentences. In my opinion, Penguin is the best case scenario for what this type of show can be. Yeah. Um, if this was a Marvel show, it would be the best Marvel show that has ever existed. Yeah. I think. Because it takes a side character from a movie, deepens your understanding of that character, is memorable as a piece of storytelling and fiction in and of itself, and also does an, a great job setting you up for the next thing. And there are so few Marvel shows that literally do all of the stuff I just said, right? Uh, and so, yes, I agree. There's some really ridiculous stuff that happens in this show. <laughs> Wildly implausible, silly things that happen in the show. Uh, but at the end of the day, there are so many memorable moments that, and, and such great acting throughout that it's like, hey, I, I, I have to root for the show. I have to be a fan because uh, they pulled it off. They, they pulled it off in a really big way. So let's get to it, Patrick. Let's talk about what happens. So we start the episode by flashing back to Oz's mom and Oz hanging out at the club. It turns out Dr. Rush is hypnotizing her. Uh, which is how he is learning this information. And by the way, this is very cool the way they did it. They had the older version of Oz's mom, right? Like in the young version. Uh, like, uh, And I was confused because I was like, Rex Calabresi was there at his past age, mm -hmm. but then Oz's mom was there at her present age. So like, what is... Uh, it, it, I was like, does Rex just age really well? <laughs> because we had seen Chris Emiliotti as well. Like, you know, right. she didn't age at all. So I'm like, is this the show just saying Rex is, is like eternally young? But no, it's actually a, a hip, like he, she's being hypnotized or she's getting her memories extracted from her. Uh, but this time it becomes clear that Oz knew that Oz, I'm sorry, Oz's mom knew that Oz murdered her kids. Uh, and she hired Rex Calabrese to murder Oz on the ride home from the club. Only it becomes clear later in the episode she actually stopped him from going through with it, obviously, because Oz is still alive in the future. Patrick, any uh, any thoughts on the, this flashback stuff? I think it's just as a way of portraying a flashback, I thought it was pretty clever. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, real have your cake and eat it too situation. And yeah. uh, like, it, was just, it was just really... I was just really kind of taken by just the format in which it is. I mean, this show has had true flashbacks, right? Like we've had whole, you know, episodes or chunks of episodes that take place um, in different periods, but here 
the way it straddles between both was just was just neat. I just like was like, ah, that's like a really clever way to accomplish what you're what you're trying to do here um, without it feeling cheap. Uh, but just the th- this whole section where she grapples with the understanding about what her son did and like what do you what do you do with that information um because of course your anger is so acute yeah. and pointed and and yet the solution to that is to lose another right child like it's just it's unthinkable yeah. and yet the grief she must be going through and recognizing where it came from is also unthinkable. And so it would lead you to unthinkable places. Like I, I, I don't blame her for walking right up to the line mm-hmm. and I don't blame her for walking away because the grief that she must be going through is just, I mean, there's just no way you can't even like have empathy for it. like there's, you cannot possibly imagine what it would be like to deal right. with that set of information. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, and this is why they hired Deirdre O'Connell, you know, like a really talented actor and obviously crushing it in this episode, uh, playing Oz's mom. And, and, I will say this is something we talked about early on where I wasn't really buying. Like, why is this character here? Right, what do right. they service? I will say like hat tip to the show by the end. I, it makes earlier parts of the show that felt, a little shoddier or I wasn't really along. I was like, well, I'll keep going with this until I see where the payoff is. I think they justify pretty much all of that by where they end up taking this and why they had to get these characters there. I think that the payoff here is worth some of the plate spinning that it's doing earlier in the series. 100%. I think you and I were both really skeptical of the Oz's mom's character and the Vic All these side characters. Yeah, All these side like characters just, are like, oh, these are clearly just like plot devices. And by the end, it's like, oh, nope, they actually made an impact, Patrick. They actually they actually made an impact. So uh, kudos to the show for pulling all that off. Anyway, Sophia gathers Oz and his mom together at that club in the present day to play some psychological games with them. I guess this, that's, <laughs> the, little, that's the only... Uh... That's the only reason. It, That's the only reason, right? Right. Um, I, I got to be honest. She comes out and has a real choice of um, an outfit that she's wearing. When she flashes her, <laughs> her feet up, I was like, I don't yeah. know. We all, are we really just ba- like for half a second? I'm like, do you want to play a game? Like, do we just like take the jigsaw, like <laughs> doll color aesthetic and turn that into uh-huh. a uh, to a dress? I, it was nice. wonderful. I, I loved this sequence. But yes, I mean, she could have just killed Oz right there. But no, she wanted to torture him first, right? That's that's the only reason literally anything else that happens this episode happens. is because. And if she just killed him right then and there, literally, she would have been fine. <laughs> literally, it w- she would have had a much happier ending, you know? It's at least... But, so, I mean, it's, 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 it's the show taking a villainous cliche and at least justify... You know, I think it justify... I don't... I hate some of the stuff that happens in the wake of it. Yeah. But the idea that like, you know, the, well, if the villain just pulled the trigger instead of giving a big speech, you know, they could have achieved their, 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 uh, what they were going for. I get why she wants him to say it. I, 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 I'm with her. Yeah. She tries to convince Oz to confess that he murdered his brothers to his mom. Right. Um, and yeah, like he's obviously put her through a lot over the years, right? So you get it. But anyway, uh, it is a heartbreaking moment when she says that she already knows. Like that was a, that's probably the emotional highlight of the series is like, I agree. Oz's mom is like, I already know like the truth. Just say it, tell her. I already fucking know. And and he he kind of has this shock on his face, and you know it's it's Colin Farrell is, is crushing it in this role. So anyway, uh, Oz's mom stabs him <laughs> in the stomach, and then somehow Oz escapes. Nevertheless, he gets away, uh, which is something that happens multiple times throughout the series <sighs> and this, this episode. Yeah, between that and the stroke, I just we had the random heart attack in the previous episode. Yeah. And then random stroke here and his ability to just muscle his way out of it. I, I, I was, I was, I was like, wow, we just had a, one of the greatest moments in this series. 
and then I want to throw my remote at the television. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, what? these people, the, sh- the show is full of smart people putting, st- like, but why? I, th- mm, I, I just, ah. This is like it the makes- second time that Oz has been tied up in a chair, uh, you know, <laughs> dealing with the uh, Falcons and, and has gotten away. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like if you've got this guy dead to rights and you're not taking care of business, it, at some point, it's, it becomes your fault, you know? Anyway, uh, so Sophia gathers all the gangs together in Gotham and offers a bounty for Oz. She'll give up her entire empire and estate in exchange for Oz's custody. Why? Because she can't. She's not playing this game anymore. You know, she doesn't need to rise through the ranks anymore. She's just going to leave and everything's going to be fine. Meanwhile, Oz goes to the courtroom to meet with the city councilman and talks him into backing him up. So Oz is like lining up all of his people at the same time. And finally, Mr. Zhao apprehends Oz and hands him over to Sophia uh, at the airport. Like Sophia sets fire to her entire house before she leaves. So like she's not making good on her deal. And then at the airport, Link betrays Mr. Zhao and somehow Oz gets to drop on Sophia again. And takes her for a ride into the middle of nowhere. Uh, but yeah. Um, then you find out that he's basically turning her in and she's going back to Arkham. So that's that's what happens there. Oof. But the, the key here, you see, is that Oz got Link to turn. He got all the second in command people to turn. You see, yeah. The underappreciated uh, people like Oz, you see, mm-hmm, Patrick? Mm-hmm. They're like Oz and th- no one appreciates them, but they have their mm-hmm. own dreams. They have their mm-hmm. own aspirations. So uh, that's how he did it. You know, it, we flash very back. Conven- like, very convenient uh, montage to just like, how do we pull? <laughs> don't, worry, don't worry about it. Between the councilman and all the, and yeah, I, I mean, you might say that Oz has already burned his credibility with these people multiple times, you know, but I guess not because he appealed to their humanity this time around. Sure. Uh, their, their, their aspirations this time around. So anyway. Uh, yeah, so Oz gets thrown back in, uh, sorry, Oz gets Sophia thrown back in Arkham again. Julian Rush is back there? I guess they just let him back after he did all the crimes. Like, <laughs> he just, like, goes back to, like, Sophia's gone. He's like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna go back to being a doctor again. Like, <laughs> maybe, you know, I, I don't know what the, uh, application process is for Arkham. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe they're just desperate for people, like, oh, you want to come work here? Okay, yeah, you know what? Yeah, come on back. <laughs> they have a severe uh, worker shortage. They got a recruiting Arkham. problem. It's they got difficult. a recruiting problem. I don't. I can't imagine why. I do want to acknowledge uh, Shane over at DecodingTV.com wrote this message in last week. When Dr. Rush was using his hypno- hypnosis gizmo on Oz's mom, I had a sinking feeling that he and Sophia would make her confess to killing Oz's brothers and have her committed to Arkham as a nasty form of poetic justice, uh, justice against Oz, end quote. Cool idea. Uh, he does obviously extract the memories from her that they used to psychologically try to torture Oz, um, but they didn't end up doing, you know, going full anti Oz's mom in that way. Uh, but I thought that was an interesting idea. Thanks to Shane for sharing that at decodingtv.com. All right, and then what happens in this episode? Sophia gets a letter in the in the mail. It's from Selena Kyle, Sophia's half sister, uh, and Sophia has this kind of like fun look on her face. Oh, what a nice letter. Uh, that's nice that, that Selena Kyle wrote to me, and, and I'm sure they have a lot to bond over. Uh, by the way, so opening the door for uh, Sophia to be in the next Batman movie, very possible, oh, right? So. That's that, that's the thing that put my... It would have been so easy. And, the, you know, the setup they have for her to potentially die at the hands of, of Oz makes sense. Like, it's like, okay, this okay, I, I see how we got here, but I was delighted that they left. Like, the character's just too good. She's too good. Um, I'm glad that she's going to get an opportunity. Maybe I will get my, my super villain turn, um, that I was kind of hoping this was a, in some ways, a backdoor super villain origin story for whatever she becomes. Yeah. Uh, indeed. So then there's two major scenes that happened that kind of like cement this show into legendary status, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, right? In the first scene, Oz kills Vic. It's a brutal scene. I'm curious, uh, Patrick, you know, I'm going to read this interview uh, that Sam Adams did with Lauren LeFranc, the showrunner over at slate.com. But I'm curious, like, what was your initial reaction to this? Like, what, what was your interpretation of what happened there? I think it is the show. 
Because there could be an element of like the breaking bad of it all, right? Where like Oz is this funny, charismatic, wriggles his way out of every jam, like clearly an evil guy, but like, you know, hey, are you I think there's a, a version of this show where like you fall for his own pitch. And like, oh, he's just he's he's working for the downtrodden. Like he's he's just trying to help elevate people. And this scene and the scenes that follow uh, with his mother, like, are meant to encapsulate, no, like, this is a selfish, petty, empty vessel of a person. Nothing exists in there. It is, he, he has concocted a reality to excuse his own actions that are in service of nothing other than himself. Mm-hmm. Even if he might tell Vic or his mother there are noble intentions, there is nothing noble or excusable about him. And this the scene exists to snuff out any sense that you might have as a viewer that you should give that any credit or validation. I guess I'm curious, like why you think he did it though. Like what was your hundred percent agree with everything you just said. I, I guess I'm curious, like why you thought he did it. Like what was your interpretation of that? Cause? I think, I think he's doing that to himself as well. Like, I think he's ready to shut like, Maybe there is a part of him, like as as villainous and as as obviously morally bad as he is, like he himself believes um, that, like maybe there is some good for him to do. And by snuffing out Vic, he gets to focus specifically on the fantasy, um, mm-hmm. and by that eliminating Vic him, a, Vic is a distraction and possible weak yeah. point, basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that's all. That's all accurate. Uh, Lauren LeFranc gave this interview at slate.com and she said, it it was really important to me that you feel as if Oz doesn't need to do this. And yet he does not that anybody needs to enact violence in our show at any time. They just all choose to, for various reasons. It's easy to justify Oz's actions throughout the show and Sophia and so many of our characters, but it was really important for me that we do not justify what Oz does to Victor and that it Mm. just feels appalling and terrible and unnecessary. Um, I knew Victor needed to die, and as we were breaking the story for the finale, it felt very essential to put it later in the episode, not earlier. I want you as the audience to be surprised and also thrown and disgusted with what Oz chooses to do. I worried if you did this to Victor sooner, it would be hard for you to even follow Oz or to understand what he's going through or for the Oz versus Sophia quality of the finale to carry the same weight, end quote. Um, I thought I think that's all very smart. Like if they put it, Yeah, if they put it earlier in the episode, I think it would have been it would have been hard to even conceive of what, like what, why are we even following this character anymore? You know, well, like, cause we're in the epilogue mode. Like, yeah. You're essentially in, like you're in this show doesn't do post credits, but it's the, you know, it's in that we're like, all right, the main action has subsided. Like the tension is resolved. And we know that this leads in to a fit. Like, where do we leave these characters? Where are they on the chessboard in these final moments? And I think putting it there is so much, it was extremely smart. Um, and it really subverts these sort of like the very like cliche setup they have. Like, ah, these two guys just looking over the city. This is what there is theirs. Mm-hmm. And then he just does the most monstrous thing and does it in the most, you know what I mean? Like a, gu- a, a gun, uh, yeah. horrific, violent, simple, effective, quick. He wants him to feel it, to suffer and to extinguish like in front of him, like he wants me to feel anguish in those final moments. And that is the way he does it is, is encapsulates the, I think exactly what, you know, she was going for. I think it's that the way he chooses to kill Victor is particular and specific and especially monstrous. Yeah. And I I will say Mia culpa, you know, when I, started talking about the show. I was like, oh, well, one of the problems of the show is Oz is already starting at a 10. He's letting, like, innocent children die in front of him. Like, that was in the first episode <laughs> of the show, right? Right, right. And credit where credit's due, they managed to up his level of evil in the show. Like Because it's personal, right? Like right, they, right. Part, yeah. I, I, I was, as we got closer to the end, I'm like, I still don't, I don't need to see Vic in the movie. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> what are they doing? Like, he's... I, I, you know, he served his role as a, you know, in the show, but I don't, I don't really buy that I need to see him in the next film and where they, you know, what they end up doing with the character and what he serves, like is, is being something personal that Oz extinguishes for no, like, I think that's how he, they get the character there to fall even further morally for you is because everything else is sort of random acts of violence against characters that we know nothing about. 
here Victor essentially ex- like exists as a character for the audience to get close to, and then for him to snuff out in a way that you know obviously feels just pure evil. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my sense is like he killed him because he didn't. He, he's realized that family is a weakness, essentially, right? Like his mom is a weakness, uh, and he's like, I can't have anyone who I really care about moving forward. He's convinced himself that that's the case. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a brutal murder and, uh, it, it really is like, I, I'm impressed the show went there, you know, I'm impressed yeah. the show had him, be, as you said, it's personal. It's somebody who he actually cares about. Like you, you do sense that he actually cares about this person. And if he could kill that person, then really nothing stands in his way. Uh, okay. Final scene. Oz's mom is in a permanent vegetative state from the stroke that she had earlier. Uh, and in the final scene, like he's in the penthouse, he got her, he got her into the penthouse, uh, but she can't really be conscious of what's really going on at that point. And, uh, but he, he is now like at the top of the Gotham criminal food chain, it seems. Uh, and in the final sequence, he, Oz forces Evie to dress up as, a, as his mom and tell him she loves him as we see the bat signal over the city for the first time. Patrick, you got your wish. It, it <laughs> turns out finally, after leaving a trail of destruction behind him, uh, he, Batman finally has has gotten his attention. So, uh, yes, I mean they, they there have been I've read a couple follow up interviews where they've talked about like yes, obviously we mapped out and talked through various scenes where you know either the Bruce Wayne or a Batman would would show up, um, and they just never quite found anything that that made sense. And that's a good impulse, right? Like. It's ultimately, while I think it is profoundly silly that Batman was not mentioned by these characters or like, oh, well, hopefully we don't raise, hopefully the bat doesn't, you know what I mean? Like, not, like nothing, you know what I mean? Nothing that sort of acknowledges the universe that exists in creatively as an impulse to pull back from putting in a scene that seems so obvious is a, like, it gives me a lot of confidence in all the creatives involved in building and sketching out this world. Cause that is a good impulse to have. Even if I, like I said, I think it is exceptionally silly that we, we, we the, the first thing we get is the, the bat signal uh, at the end. I did have a question for you. What did you interpret? Cause you, yes, she's in a vegetative state, but there's a tear that rolls mm-hmm. down his mom's eye as she looks out over the city. What, what did you interpret that tear to mean? Yeah, I don't know. Like, if she's really in a permanent vegetative state, like, theoretically, she's not conscious of what's going on around her. But it's like, maybe there's, like, the the human body is a very strange thing. And sometimes, like, people, there's things that parts of our body understands that other parts of our bodies don't, you know, maybe. Like, that is, uh, yeah. Maybe on some level, she recognizes that she's in a terrible situation. That's, that. yeah. yeah. That's, I gotta, like, given everything else, that's where my mind went was... You know, we you can't fully know what's happening in there, but my worry is she's trapped in a prison. In, Absolutely, in many ways. In many ways, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't interpret it as she has locked in syndrome personally, but like I think just like yeah, there, there's part of her that that under part of her body like understands that there's like some deep sadness that she should be experiencing. Um, but but I gotta say this ending man is incredible. Like Oedipal, you know, it's like. It recalls Requiem for a Dream, Old Boy, like just this this ultimate, like this guy kind of got everything he wanted and it's like the saddest outcome imaginable. Dancing with his, like forcing Evie to dress up as his mom and you, what what's Evie's state of mind? She was already done with him at that point uh, earlier on, but like she probably has to go back to him because he's now has so much power, like she can't run away from him now. Um, so she's probably in a terrible situation. There's something really um, interesting too because I believe I have this right. I think Evie's last name is shared with the last name of the real name, well, real name of the villain Clayface, like who plays uh, mm. Clayface. Um, and I don't know, you know, this is obviously a much more grounded version of of Batman, and maybe something like Clayface doesn't exist in Matt Reeves' interpretation of mm. this world and the villains. But if the, like if this is an acknowledgement of like. Well, she is in like for Penguin, acting like the character Clayface. Mm. Which is like I will be what you need to be in this moment, like because she is putting on a character. Right. She's putting I on a that. face. 
for a penguin. I, you know, because it would make sense. Like, it's hard for me to like look at the original. I don't know how fantastic this like series is ever going to get. And Reeves has made it sound like he doesn't intend to get all that fantastic in this interpretation. And so it's easy to see like attaching her name as an acknowledgement of Clayface as a character. And then the character she performs in the show is a version of like, I'll be whatever. Like, I, if that's what that ends up being, I think that's, it's pretty smart and pretty interesting uh, and, and pretty creative and also really haunting because where it leaves Penguin, the mental state of this character. Yeah. Before whatever happens in the second film. I mean, it's upsetting. <laughs> it's upsetting. It's upsetting. That's the word I use to describe it. It's upsetting. And so uh, Eve Carlo, like Carlo's yes. your last name. Basil Carlo is the Clayface name. And for those who don't know, like Clayface is essentially like a shapeshifter uh, mm-hmm. character. And so like you can take different forms and different people. And so that's, that's what will make that really appropriate. But yeah, I mean, a haunting image of him just dancing in this little penthouse with Eve and uh yeah just it's just like he's kind of down this path of delusion you know like he's he's gotten everything he's wanted but he 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 has lost everything he has ever cared about other than Evie who who doesn't really have any affection for him I think at this point anyway uh along the way and um it's haunting it's upsetting it's brutal uh and bravo like they they pulled off a show that was compelling and had memorable moments and great acting. And yeah, like there was some really silly stuff, but at the end of the day, I think they accomplished their mission. I do want to say, uh, in this, uh, Slate interview, Lauren LaFranc says, quote, I didn't have any mandates for any of the characters, except that Oz needed to achieve a level of power that made him more noticeable to the Batman. And (laughs) so I thought that was interesting. It's like, Hey, Matt Reeves, like you can do anything you want, and the only thing is, at the end of it, Oz needs to still be alive and um, and be a little bit more, like have some more notoriety, and that's it. And so, and within that sandbox, I think they did some really interesting stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, so maybe something Marvel should consider doing as well is like maybe go go a little easier on the mandates. <laughs> uh, well, this, the, the difference here is the sandbox is relatively small, right? Like Mm -hmm. they're putting out Batman movies once every five years uh, and one television show in between. So it's, I think it's much easier to, you know, to play in a box like that versus the accelerated pace that, that Marvel operates at, which is not, I'm not saying that's a great way to, obviously it's caused a lot of issues, the pace that Marvel uh, puts things out at um, and, and the creative consequences it has. I do also just want to say that Colin Farrell has expressed uh, interest in doing season two of the show, uh, which is surprising to me because I thought he didn't want to put on that makeup again. But he said um, uh, he, he did talk about like how great of an experience he had working on season one. And he, he does seem like uh, he would return for season two if given the option. So, um, yeah, I, I think it seems like it's possible. He says, quote, uh, this is an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. Uh, if there's a great idea for season two and the writing was really muscular and as strong or stronger on the page than it was in the first season, of course I would do it. Uh, for me, the bar for success is not very high. It's do most people like it. <laughs> Just the simplicity of that. I love being in things that are critically approved. It's much better than the alternative, but I've been around long enough to know that it's the audience who are really the most important critics, end quote. Uh, open question. Um, what's up with the sugar season two then? You know? Because I don't think anyone really liked that. Anyway, okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm being a bastard. All right. Uh, any other thoughts on The Penguin Season 1, Patrick Klepek? No, it makes me... Uh, I, I liked the first movie quite a bit. I liked this series quite a bit. Um, I, I'm, whatever Reeves wants to do... You know, I... There was a rumor going around that they were going to do a, a Joker television show. James Gunn ended up shooting that down, saying it's not... That's not been pitched. It's not something they're considering. At this point... Uh, you know, I'm I'm anxious, but trying to be patient over Reeves doing more in this space because the quality bar is so high, and I just want to see more of this world carved out. Like that's that's kind of where I'm left after this is whatever you want to do, man. I like I will watch it because so far, like it's been home run after home run. Hey everyone, David Chen here. Thank you so much for watching that video from Decoding TV. If you want to get an audio version of the show, all you got to do is go to podcast.decodingtv.com. And if you want to support what we do, get ad-free episodes of the podcast and also bonus episodes of the podcast, go to decodingtv.com and become a paid member. Of course, you can also like and subscribe for more. We appreciate it. Thanks. See you later.